Welcome everybody. In an effort to be succinct and efficient with your time, we're going to do a trick grip here. And we're going to be, you know, informative and concise. Since that, uh, apparently there are three people on Facebook that require that before they'll watch any video. But more importantly than that, the heck with them. Look at this box. Look at this box artwork. I'm impressed with how it has uh, evolved here and uh, transformed itself into reality. The original um, original artwork I saw online, you know, looked great and all the rest of it. But uh, seeing it in person here in this huge format box, let me uh, use a D6 for a scale. <laughs> but what size D6 is it, you ask? So. Here's a casino die for scale. How about that? Yeah, everybody knows how big they are. So th this is a big ass box. It's a Greg Porter design, Mark Walker game. It's from Flying Pigs. Uh, there's already a couple of shrink grips out there. So I'm probably not gonna be showing you anything different than anybody else, but thanks for tuning in. I'm gonna flip the box over now that we've had a look at the artwork. And it's nice to see the name on the side of the box. There's been a few games that have come out, come out recently from folks. I don't have the names of the game on the spine. And I, I like that the spine, uh, the name of the game on the spine. All right. So we've got two mounted boards. We've got four sheets of gorgeous, no less, die cut counters. We've got some, uh, you know, different, it, it actually goes into detail the different types of vehicles and things. We don't care about that right now because we're going to look at them. This is for 14 uh, year olds and up. No 13 year olds are allowed to play this game two players, or you can use the solitaire expansion, or you can just be a big boy and play by yourself. And I know many of you are big boys, you know what I'm saying. Playing time, one to three hours. I had the privilege of playing an early version of this game uh, when it f was first uh, being developed. And it's been underdeveloped for quite a while. And then the Kickstarter happened and I played it well before Kickstarter occurred, and I, I enjoyed it because there were a, a handful of things that went on in the game that I found to be just different enough to give it a, a the game system a fresh feel. It's not, uh, it's not another Me Too design. Here's something that's interesting. Uh, we've got this little uh, barcode scanner here so we can scan that and get more information on the game, which is interesting. I'd like to know where that takes us and what website we end up at. So we'll, hopefully we won't forget to have a look at that before we wrap up. This broadcast, this video to you, will not be edited and nor will it be cut in any way, shape or form unless I get a telephone call. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. Nice tight box. Lovely, lovely. So you've got your rule book. I'm guessing, look at that. Looks like a rule book, folks. Full color, index on the left-hand side, 29 pages, including scenarios. Uh, examples are in green. The uh, neat thing about this system, if, from my perspective, is that, uh, well, let's just get into this first. Let's have a look at the rules for a little bit. So I'm, I, you know, I haven't read the final rules, so I'd be curious to see how this all all pans out here. Yeah. So uh, the dice uh, that you use, there should be here the different colored dice, right? So the red, green, and black. Uh, the different dice have a different number of uh, tokens on them and different combinations of tokens on them. And that's gonna drive your combat results. And those dice can be added or subtracted depending on who you're shooting at and what you're shooting at. <coughs> and a lot of that's driven by, by the detail here on the counters. Platoon scale, set in a uh, post-apocalyptic era. And this all looks pretty well laid out. It looks more like uh, the Mark Walker narrative style of rule writing. So we'll see how that all works out. 
a big font so i imagine and you know a big layout too there's lots of artwork on these so i imagine if you got just the raw rules without all this uh all this stuff here so we get to 28 pages by the looks of it uh here's an example of play so let's is that an example of play yeah it is so 24 pages of rules i bet you probably compress this down with the standard size font to 15 pages or so so it's not going to be too rules heavy right so there's a quick look at that let's have a look at these counter sheets <laughs> well these are big these are the same size almost i think these are the same size as the ost counters and they look to me like got a little bit of a satin finish to it really nice the artwork on them is pretty special Let's have a look at the backs of the counters here. One of the other neat things about this game too is you you will uh, here. Let's pop this guy. And this may not be accurate now. Forgive me, Mark, if I do it wrong because it's been a while, okay, since I played your game. But here's what you're going to be doing: is putting. If someone is pinned, right? Look, it's got all the details of what happens when you're pinned here. There's rec markers on the back, but you put this underneath your counter like this and put it on the board. So there's none of this huge piles of uh, counters in the way and you don't know, you, you'll know what belongs to who, what belongs to who. And so you do this sort of thing here like this. All right, that's an interesting little feature, I think. It's a nice mechanic. It's a nice user interface feature. There's some uh, other activities on the back here, shaken, pinned. I'm gonna zoom this out a little bit. All right. More weapons, more counters. As you can see, the artwork there is all pretty nifty looking. charts, reference tables, explaining what everything means and does for you. Two of those for two players. Terrain chart on the left hand side. Still not in alphabetical order, but there you go. One of these days Mark will do that. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't do it just to piss me off. All right, let's have a look at this map. All maps, I'm gonna put this to one side. So if you're into desert warfare, I'm imagining, oh wow, it's kind of big. No, 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 no. There you go. That's one map. I'm going to lay the second one down over the top. And we'll see what happens there. This one has a camp and some roads and a, a city structure, village, city. There's a hospital there, so a city. Big, big map. Both of them have a command track on the left-hand side. Well, it'll be the right-hand side when they turn around the right way. So that's pretty big. So you get a lot of stuff in the primary box for your money. I think we are talking... 60 or 75 bucks for that all of that now as if that weren't enough in the Kickstarter because you guys all went crazy and spent so much money you will also receive a swanky poster of the cover art which is definitely going into a frame and up on the wall somewhere I want to try and take care of that the 600 a campaign for Armageddon war know very little about this but you're gonna have a persistent campaign here to take a look at and it has one two three four five six wow six scenarios in it a little reference card in the back as well and a little terrain chart again so that's pretty nice you get that but you know, 
you also get another box with an, another set of goodies in it and a barcode to look at as well. This has one map and one, one sheet of canvas. This is an expansion if it's going to bring the Hezbollah and the Jordanian forces with some ISIL Israeli and Russians and Americans and a few other things into the game as well. Holy crap, that'll work once again. It's pretty striking stuff and it looks pretty cool. It almost looks like, looks like a photo that's been uh, edited. Very nice. So here we go. The uh, scenarios. We won't go through all of that. There's an extra counter sheet. You guys can check out. RPGs, all sorts of fun stuff, vehicles. And let's see what the map looks like. Very different terrain here, I can tell you that much straight off the bat. And I'm sure this is going to be geomorphically connectable to... Whoa. Dad's, Dad's having issues here with the map. Okay, let's see if I can get it up the right way this time. So much heavier terrain, right? Trees, hillsides. The artwork is really pretty gorgeous. That's got a nice 3D aspect to it. Now it's obviously all digitally rendered, right? At least I think it is anyway. It's certainly not hand drawn, but they really do look quite striking. Uh, it's you know, a muted palette, very pretty. So. Anyway, I know uh, there's a lot of folks that don't like shrink rips and all the rest of it, but I, I think they're, they're fun to do. I, I love having my first reaction to a game and being able to record that reaction and you know, share with you my experience and how I feel about it. And I hope that uh, you got a little something out of this, and maybe if you haven't already purchased this, you'll take an opportunity to have a look at it. Uh, Toon scale combat in the post-apocalyptic world. And that's it. I hope you enjoy it. I'm looking forward to getting this bad boy on the table uh, probably later this week. Today is Thursday. I'm hoping by Friday night we'll have the rules skim read and we'll get stuck into it. And uh, you'll be seeing some live video play. You can watch me fumble through uh, playing the game. All right, guys, take care.